Yo, what is going on everybody? It's Crypto TMG and I'm back with a brand new video. And today we're going to start off with how I make a setup for Mazzano. What sort of things I change on the card to get the card to really work with the track. Now I've tried a few different cards and it seems to kind of be universal in terms of what I'm changing on the cards to really get the card to, you know, extract the extra time that you do need around a circuit like this, which is a little bit different from most circuits because you can have a lot of sort of tight and twisty sections to the track where you really have to get the nose in. Well, then you also have the... the uh, the corners at the end of the track where you kind of got a trail break into the corner not break too heavy because the car can snap on you very violently and um pretty much put you in the wall so we're going to go through what subtle changes i make to the car just as a base so you guys can not necessarily try my setup but sort of you know guide your setups in the right direction so you guys can start finding more time anyway let's get stuck into the video it's crypto tmg hope you do like it leave a like and definitely subscribe if you're new anyway let's do this so first things first if you guys don't already know pretty much most people are running the tow trick if you don't know what the tow trick is um it's pretty much just putting your tow to max negative now for me um particularly in the nsx evo i don't actually run the rear all the way to minus four i actually run it to minus 0 0.3 so um i feel like it doesn't make it too too oversteer you know um, some people do use it in other cars, but I feel like for the for the Evo, it's fine just like this. Um, now there's pretty much, you know, there's a lot of speculation which is the best TC methods to run, whether you want to run one eight or whether you want to invert that and run seven. Or well, I've been running seven one actually, which feels pretty good. I do prefer to stick the ABS up to five on this car because I feel like it does struggle to slow down. And again, if you are trying this setup in the NSX Evo, you might want to consider running one of the other ECU maps. I believe there's a uh, progressive, uh, linear, aggressive throttle map. And, and you know, I, I, I tend to stick with ECU map three, I believe. Um, but yeah, that's normally what I do for the uh, NSX Evo. Again, in other cars, it might be different. Not all cars in this game have TC and TC2. Um, I think the cars that do have it will be sort of the the Evo, the NSX Evo, the new Audi Evo, the Aston Martin, um, the Ferrari Evo has it as well. Um, does the BMW have it? I don't think it does. I can't remember. But um, not all cars have it. So again, it is down to personal preference. Uh, moving on to fuel and stuff like that. We already know we're going to put the brake pads on one. Now, if you're doing a race, it's like for LFM, which I'm in the LFM server right now, which is about... 25 minute race you're going to want to be using brake pads one um i tend to practice of around 25 liters well about 15 to, to 25 liters most of the time when i'm in the lfm practice server um again that is personal preference but if you are planning to do sort of two hour endurance races or anything longer then obviously you're going to have to think about brake pads two but generally i make a setup with brake pads one and let's get stuck into the more juicy part of the setup now for me the mechanical grip and the aero are the two most important things for me around Mazzano in this car in particular um what i found is is that so far on this track trying to find that balance of nimbleness through the slow speed and and you know enough downforce to, to make the car really work in the faster parts of the track where you're braking was the end of the lap braking and turning and stuff like that and heavy braking but you, you a lot of the time when you run lower down force when you try to brake the car just doesn't slow down quick enough you really do need a, a very strong front end for this track and also you need a decent amount of traction so what i found is that running a rear stiffer wheel rate tends to give the car the rotation that you really need through the uh, slower corners especially in the first sector which is a very very important sector um a lot of the time people don't realize how much time there is in that first sector and through turn one turn two there is tons and tons of time just by getting the line right just by being able to get the nose into that corner um and for me so far all the time i found the majority of the time has been with running a stiffer rear wheel rate compared to the front i run the front um quite soft I'd say sort of medium and a lot of the time I feel personally as if you know it definitely gave the car that that bit more agility in um 
being able to attack that first sector of the lap and again in the last sector as well where you come up to the penultimate corner you really want to be able to go flat through the penultimate corner if you shift up early which i'll show you guys a lap that i did um later on in this video but um for me you know try the the rear stiffer wheel rate you're gonna you're going to have to balance it out a little bit with preload and a little bit of your aero balance but again um for me definitely found more time in it and going to the anti-roll bars now i've been making the rear anti-roll bar quite soft and that's so i can get a little bit more traction out the corners without getting loads of wheel spin and the front end i've had completely stiff there's a lot of sort of extremely tight corners um on this circuit you really do need a pointy front end and that's what i've done to get the best out of the car now the dampers i'm not gonna do too much to these these are actually default dampers and i did try default dampers on the nsx even when i drove it i did end up changing a few things but you know it didn't you know i didn't feel progressively worse or better what i did change um now going to the aero this is where you're gonna have to figure out what sort of balance you want um how good are you at trail braking and sort of balancing the car on a knife edge me personally my trail braking is not the best so i actually normally run about max wing around here and then i put the rear right height up to between 65 66 um i dropped the front right height down all the way and this sort of gave me the amount of um rotation that i really felt that i needed and so far so good and i did also try the amg around here as well and i was probably about about a tenth off of what i was able to do in the nsx evo actually i think if if i was able to nail all my perfect sectors for the nsx evo i probably would have been around about a 32 8 or 9 um i ended up getting a 33 1 which wasn't my which was wasn't all my best sectors but it was still comfortably a decent time um and in terms of aero now you want to really be careful with the aero some people i've seen they have to run sort of a higher higher ride height because the car is not absorbing the bumps a lot of the bumps they have on the curbs around here and it can unsettle the car the nsx tends to be quite kind in that regard which is why i'm able to run it at 54 um, but then you do have other cars that just really don't take to the bumps okay um but yeah for me as i said rear wing at 12 i think you want to be running between minimum 9 to 12 and obviously if you're running 9 on the rear wing then you're gonna have to probably come down a little bit on the ride height you're gonna have to sacrifice some of that otherwise as soon as you hit the brake pedal your back end is going to be trying to overtake the front i went with the higher downforce because i feel like it, in a race situation it protects tires um your your braking tends to be a little better as well and I just like that all-round stability, you know. Um, it makes it, for me, more possible to push over a plethora of laps instead of being fast on just one or two and then the rear tires go off a little bit and the car starts getting sketchy and it just becomes way more difficult to drive. But um, these are the changes that I would say at the moment. Definitely, definitely try the stiffer wheel rate. And if you feel like the car is over rotating too much then again you can go up on the preload or maybe just drop the rear right height by a tad um but for me you know getting the the direction um and the slow speed into this car was very very important because when i tried it on the default it just wouldn't you know it wouldn't turn every time i pressed the throttle pedal it was sort of push out on on throttle understeer was a joke and i want to try it with a few more cars so far i tried the amg which i did similar with similar things too but obviously the amg has front aero so there was a few different things in there if you do want the amg setup um i've actually got that for my members and my patrons so if you're a member of my youtube channel or a patron then you can jump in my discord channel and i've got a discord channel for my members and patrons where i drop all the setups that i'm making on a daily basis so hope you guys do um jump and support your boy and get some setups in in return um i'm gonna work on the audi evo 2 and i actually want to try the porsche before the end of the week so um i will be trying to drop another video this week as i said guys if you don't know where i've been obviously my missus gave birth to my little boy that was on the 7th of april so i've been pretty busy man but this is the first time i'm really getting back on the game in the groove and uh yeah hope you guys do enjoy the video i'm gonna leave the lap that i managed to do and the actual setup that i had for this car 
and just wait to the end of the video you get the sub anyway it's crypto tmg like and subscribe hit the notification bell to catch my videos first and peace amazon is a tricky track you have to be you know willing to cut quite a lot of the corners and it kind of seems like you know going against what you're supposed to be doing in terms of how you're supposed to be driving circuits now if we slow it down for turn one you can see how much of how much of the entry that i'm using on the curbs and then we're going to completely cut across turn one and that really is we're just opening up the circuit as much as we can to maximize um the entry speed and we're trying to keep our car more towards the right now again we're going to cut across the curb some more again and now some cars once they hit these black and yellow sort of um sausage curbs they really do unsettle the honda is quite nice in that regard now you want to try and keep a tight line through this corner again cutting across the curb mazano really is all about maximizing where you can get away with it up to these sort of slow corners this double right hander again we're going to cut across the curb once more we probably could have cut across that more you don't want to get too much on the outside curb again cut across the inside curb again now you can see the theme of Mazzano literally cut exactly where you can you're gonna have to get it perfect because at some places you can invalidate like on the exit of this corner very easy to invalidate your lap but, um coming up towards quite a difficult braking zone very easy to get it wrong when I break around the 100 meter board and again we're gonna cut across this inside curve we could have actually cut it more but um still managed to get a decent decent exit the car can slide on exit here and sometimes it does lose you quite a bit of time again this corner probably one of the most tricky corners on the whole circuit you're sort of trail breaking in i try to sort of break in a straight line to get the maximum amount of um, braking pressure done without unsettling the car again you want to cut over that inside curb quite a bit i didn't manage to that much but managed to carry good speed through the corner now this part of the circuit is if your setup is not balanced this is where it's most likely going to kill you so coming through this fast section we're going to slow it down a little bit because it is pretty tricky and as you hit the braking zone the car can become unsettled but we're pretty stable through here cut across the curb again use a lot of the exit curb on the outside and as we hit the brakes you break in a straight line again and then you sort of want to take a layer apex i didn't cut over as much of the inside of the curb as i wanted to but try and keep the car in a straight line on exit not too much wheel spin again we short shift up into third cut across the penultimate corner those curbs can unsettle your car again almost pushes us out and invalidates our lap but we managed to keep in now watch this corner i actually break pretty early for the last corner and then we cut across again see how much of the track we can actually cut it's pretty insane and yeah that's a lap around mazano pretty tricky you have to be able to take advantage of you know all these curves and stuff like that if you're new to the game and what i notice is a lot of people they they drive extremely neat they're extremely neat while driving and a lot of the time it's just it doesn't it doesn't wield the lap time although they are very neat um it doesn't yield the lap time by being you know completely inch perfect off the curbs you really do have to track extend and push the car to the absolute limit so hope you guys did enjoy the the lap guide i'm gonna let you guys watch the replay and i will be dropping the setup for you guys in the description below i also have a setup folder in the description below so don't miss out on that as well but anyway hit to tmg like and subscribe hit the notification bell to catch my videos first and peace
Thank uh you. -huh. 